men, it's time to up our game in the bedroom. And I'm hosting the number one conference that's going to show you how. With international speakers such as Destin Jerick, such as Cam Frazier, such as Habib Akande. This is going to give you invaluable tips, keys, hidden gems to help you become the best self in and out of the bedroom. I want you to get involved and join 3,000 men from all around the world who are coming together to up their game. Join the link in the description and reserve your spot. Men, it's time to up our game. Let's go. Yeah, yes. so my name is Habib Bukande, um, and I'll be speaking to Paul about his his work as a nutritionist, um, a herbalist, a best-selling author, as well as a men's coach. And he's got an upcoming event on the 29th of June where um, I'll also be one of the speakers, um, where he's got this great event called Men Up In Their Game. It's a sex and intimacy um, conference. Again, purely for men, so it'll be a safe space. We'll be talking about a number of things. There's going to be so many speakers from around the world dealing with common issues that men face, from erectile dysfunction, how to last longer in the bedroom, um, how to attract a woman, um, and, and amongst other things. So really pleased to, to receive the invitation from Paul. But before speaking about the conference at hand, Paul, do you mind giving a quick... Um, overview introduction to who you are and the work that you do yeah so i'm paulo tote uh, i see myself as like a facilitator of change you know someone that helps spark conversations someone that helps you know lead people to new paths based on the knowledge that i can help provide essentially so i do that through different through different avenues i do that through like my books i do that through some of the content i provide i do that through some of my businesses and then with the platform that we'll be speaking about today, that's another way that I, I aim to add value to people's lives. Yeah. That's great. And this passion of wanting to help people, have you always had that or was that did something happened that made you have this like this passion to kind of want to help people? I'm quite interested actually in, in that before we get into the topic at hand. Do you know what? It's probably my upbringing. So like how we somewhat came up, this imagine inner city London, uh, people tend to form what we thought at that point is very like close knit relationships, and like the thing we're willing to do for each other or the risk we're willing to take for one another, that sort of bond is somewhat the mentality that I take in different elements or different parts of my life, trying to facilitate those sorts of communities. So it's pretty much been a community feel or a knowledge feel to pretty much everything that I've done. So yeah, that probably comes from from childhood. Right. I'd say. Nice. And your inspiration in is it five how many books are have you written? I saw on Amazon, I think about like five or six. Yeah. No, one of them is missing, okay. so it'll be six. Wow. Yeah. And when did you start writing them and who or what was your inspiration to start writing books? So my first one I wrote was about like bodybuilding and, and my plant based journey at that point. So like the background to that book is pretty interesting. How it started was when I started getting into health and wellness, right, I used to have a, a faceless Twitter account called The Dungle Book at that point, but going back to like 2011, 2012. And then people would ask me questions. And when people ask me questions, as opposed to just replying, I'll probably send them like a one pager of what the, like the rationale or the science behind their question. So pictured that over the course of, I don't know, six months on everything from what meals do I make? So I might put together some pictures and like how do I make the recipes or how do you grow muscle on a plant-based diet, for example. And then off the back of that, you know, I thought about it. It's like, look, I've got all these different collections of like one pages. This makes sense for me to compile it, right? And then any gaps that I feel is, is there, I can start to fill it in. So that's pretty much where it started. And I, I like the whole idea of creating something that potentially can outlive me or potentially can can be touched by millions. It obviously it wasn't touched by millions. So <laughs> I might be in a jet somewhere, but irrespective, it has that potential. And then I think that love of creating and that legacy, that legacy part of it, I've just kind of continued. When I have an idea for something or an idea for a book, I just kind of just get it done. <laughs> Do I know, know you know that. I mean? uh, so you, so you, are you, would you describe yourself as something like a, like a self-starter, like you're self-motivated. It's not like you need someone to push you. Because a lot of people do ask me, like, how did you start writing books? Or Because I think a number of people that I've come across have a book. that They they want to write a book, but for whatever reason, they're worried about maybe people 
not liking their book or you know or people just are, or have imposter syndrome and things like that so i'm always interested especially speaking to other authors that what gave them that encouragement or that inspiration to just like you said you wanted to you found that there was an, an issue mm -hmm. You was helping solve people's problems and then you thought, okay, I'll put this in the form of a book and again, like you said, to kind of help people in something that will be a legacy even long after you even leave this world. So I'm just wondering, is that those pieces, that, that is quite inspirational, but how did you get that? How did you have that mindset? Have you always kind of had, had that mindset where you're like, forward thinking and thinking about you want to leave something like, behind for people to benefit from? I think like it's a, a certain confidence to know that anything I want, I can get. And anything I don't know, I can figure out. And like, what's the worst that can happen? So, and that's somewhat the mindset with a lot of things that I've done. So when I think about from books, for example, uh, I can't, I understand it, but it's foreign to me. If I have an idea and I want to do something, it's done. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to get it done, you know, because it's, it's me. It's, it's, it's like similar to gym. There's different kinds of people. There's people that require gym buddies. There's people that's 5 a.m. in the morning, they're outside. So I'm more of a, I guess I'm not doing 5 a.m. But <laughs> the mindset, if I want to do something, I'm going to get it done. And I have to finish or it's a must that I finish what I start. Like my second book, the, the third book, sorry, it took me so long. Like I made so much sacrifices for that book, which is the, the herb guide. But this is, I, I don't know, it's like more important than me. I have to, I have to get this done. If you think of like ideas, right? Sometimes ideas are like a gift. I don't know if like, people watching this might believe in different things. If you're given an idea, it's somewhat like a gift, especially something that you connect to. So if the idea is a gift and you connect to it, it's kind of like your obligation to, to see it through. You have to get it done. So I guess that's how I've seen it. Like, I used to have an agency, like a digital agency, and a lot of people will come, they'll get like branding, they'll get websites, and they want to do things in regards to like different businesses. And then after they they pay the money for the logo or, or whatever, that's it. They don't get it done, and that's just it's just foreign to me. I just think, look, money comes, money goes, but the things that you create and the, the the impact that you try to leave is kind of like what remains. And these are things that I think about. I have a weird or a warped sense of thinking or a warped mind, and these are the things that play into some of the decisions that I make. It's not logical to some people, but if I explain it, then it makes sense. That may, it makes perfect sense to me, and I think it's good, and I think it's good for people to hear. And I love what you're talking about about the mindset, the mindset, and the, the like the leave the legacy point. And that's something that I really resonate with as well a lot. So, um, no, that's the, the actually I wanted to ask you the um you said you had a Twitter page and also your your Instagram handle, Dongu book. What does Dongu mean? I was wondering what yeah. that. Yeah, no, I'm gonna give you a, a short story. Yeah. This is an exclusive. Mm -hmm. I always really share this, but so like, when I was younger, the older guys in my area used to call money dongo. It was just a normal thing, like yo, you got my dongo. If you speak to like maybe second generation growing up Jamaican men, like you tell them what's dongo, they'll be like, yeah, that's money. So when I started uni, and I used to be like, yo, um, you got my dongo. Everyone just kind of found it like foreign. So after a while, they used to call. Me like yo, yo, dongo, because you know, from young anyway, we were very advanced for our age and the things that we were doing or the things that we were able to accomplish. But anyway, so when I got into health and wellness, like, no, backtrack. Also, I'm a guy that speaks a lot in parables, right? And I, I use quotes a lot. So, like, if someone comes to me with a problem, I might tell them a quote or just spontaneously like that. And then it got to a point where my friends around me would say, Oh, that's rule number seven out of the dongo book. Or that's rule 21 out of the Dunga book. And then like a few, I said like a year or two later, I was trying to transition and and I learned about myself. So I was like, look, I'm a very private person naturally. So what am I gonna do? You know, I've lost a lot of weight at that time as well. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, right? On my iPhone, I think I had an iPhone 3 or something along those lines. We're going back now. So I recorded my first video on that and I was like, look, what am I gonna call my channel? Then the name popped in, it's like, the Dunga book, right? Which the, the rationale was, it's like, look, health is wealth, right? And when I'm talking about health, is there's a lot of different chapters of health. So it's like a book. So essentially now Dunga book is like a health book and different chapters. So I've spoken a lot about bodybuilding, about herbs, about health. And like the last chapter before hopefully I close this book and move to another chapter of my life is um, 
is like intimacy relationships and those sorts of things so that's the short meaning it's like it's basically different chapters of health compiled because essentially health is wealth that makes sense that, that makes perfect sense <laughs> and just for the benefit of those who are already i'm speaking to paul Ototi, who is a best-selling author he's an entrepreneur he's a herbalist and nutritionist he's written six books um and he's also the founder um, and he's put together a, a conference, a sex and intimacy conference specifically um, for men, which is going to be taking place on the 29th of June. It's entitled Men Up in Their Game. Um, you can find full information on um, the men. It's Men Up Their Game. Is, is that the Instagram handle? Game that, or if you yeah. go from my page, you see it as well. Yeah, so you should check out on um, Paul's um, IG. You can find full information about, about the upcoming conference. It's going to be a number of speakers from around the world dealing with a number of issues from erectile dysfunction to how to last longer in the bedroom, how to attract a woman, amongst other things. So I'm also going to be going to be one of the speakers to speak about Cunyadis. I'm really looking forward um, to the to the conference, like I said, and it's going to be a safe space where we can speak very candidly about a number of matters that we probably can't really talk about. Well, I definitely won't be able to talk about too much um, on Instagram and some of these social media media um, platforms. But before we talk about the conference, I wanted to touch on, um, again, just for benefit of those who are listening, mm. your books. Um, so I saw like the one like vegan bodybuilding. Do you mind giving an overview of a couple? I know you said you've got six, but maybe kind of an overview, high level overview of what the books are about and who they're aimed for. Um, because I'm sure people, I know I've read that, you know, in your bio that you are obviously a men's coach and you help men get into shape. And you also, you heard, I heard you say that you was you lost some weight. So was you not always in shape? Yeah. Was you quite big? I'm a, I'm a I'm a avid lover of food, man. So when I was younger, I digested okay. biscuits. Like my mum even worked at a digestive factory at a point, so that was cheap digestive biscuits. I was chubby. Okay. I lost all the weight at you. But <laughs> to run for the book, so uh, the first one I just spoke about the vegan bodybuilding guide, and then I've got a nutrition guide, which I think is amazing, by the way. It basically categorizes all nutrients that the body requires. Um, deficiencies for those nutrients where you can get those nutrients from like f uh, plant-based sources and um, f even food combinations and how you should basically structure that and if you've got an issue for example like eye floaters or you're losing hair you can basically go through the book and just understand where to get them from um, that's so both of those books I've written twice so the first variation and then I just released it I re-released it as a second variation and then I've got like a herb guide, which I think is like my magnum, my magnus opus to some extent, because that book is, I thought was amazing at the point. Um, I dedicated that to my brother as well, because whilst I should have been with my brother, I was basically writing that, like I was locked in all over Christmas. And then obviously my brother kind of passed away. I I think a, week, a week after the book was released. So it was a, it's like a, basically it's, it's a part of him. So even like with Herbie Box, like one of the products is called Zua. That's his name, essentially. But anyway, the other book that I've written is a business book. Uh, it's just like how to, because I've done quite a lot of stuff online. It's basically how to maneuver the online space. And that's like a 99p book. I gave away for free, but when I put it on Amazon, I was like, look, I just put it as 99p or something like that. I've got another book where it's just strictly targeted at, at employees in companies who want to utilize being healthier to be better at their jobs and if you're a hustler or anything sharp mind sharp body better outcomes and then the latest one is is men up in the game it's actually a book it started off as a book a bit of context it started off as a book and then i think did a few thousand like e it's purely an ebook and then i was like look the front the next frontier of this is like community it's learning from one another so with the book comes a discord group so like that whole community feel private space for the men, virtual as well. If you want to be anonymous, you can be. It's kind of like what sparked this. I use conference because I know it's a good word, but it's like a series of workshops, but it's online, it's virtual. You can learn from inside, from your home because like with guys, you know, we have a bit of ego. <laughs> I don't know if this was in, if this is in, a, in central, I don't think anyone, <laughs> anybody will come, but like you have that option if you want to. And I think there's a humility in understanding there's so much we do not know. Because like, for example, when I first stumbled across you and I was learning about like African sexuality, right? And you gave me something that I didn't know, but I had the humility to go search for that information and your information opened up doors for me. It's like, all right, let me start looking into X, Y, Z. 
But at a point where you think you know it all, that's you never find out you don't know it all because you're not learning from your information, you're not looking for new information. So basically, that's kind of what sparked the conference idea that let's create something where we have different people from different pockets in the world giving unique information and insights from their life, from their experience together, where by the time you finish that, the amount of things you know, you're, you're, you're more knowledgeable than the average man on the, in the planet. <laughs> like, most guys don't even know where the G-spot is, or, or <laughs> now you've got so much game. But anyway, um, that's, that's the, the, the rationale for it. Hopefully that answered your question. That I did brilliantly, and I, I respect your candidness, and I like the way your thought process, I mean, from all your different business um, avenues, even with the workshop, that you come across something, you find it's beneficial or useful, and then you're thinking about, okay, how can I benefit others? Whereas a lot of people wouldn't think like that. It's like, okay, they've come across something and it's just a case of, okay, I'll benefit from it. That's fine. Whereas you're actually thinking, okay, this is actually really good. I'm sure there's other people, like other men that might be interested in this information, but also you're aware of men, a lot of us have got an ego and again, but those of us who maybe want to learn is, okay, how can I create a space where they can kind of access this information I've come across? That's why I definitely, um, I, I definitely respect that. And even just your thought process in terms of, from the conference to other things, I can see like how you stumble across something because you seem to be quite an inquisitive person. And then when you find that, you think, okay, let me see how it can benefit others. So whether it's in the form of a book, conference, or doing your YouTube videos. Now coming to the conference itself, um, and it's something that I, because when we spoke um, last week, I, I myself kind of wanted to do something like this, but I didn't have the, um, I was probably too lazy. So that's why I was, I was really, um, surprised and pleased when when you you contacted me and I saw what you've put together the marketing is great um and the topics that you're tackling and especially getting people from different parts of the world and different expertise in 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 without giving too much away because obviously I know you've got you're also going to be speaking as well about the topic can you talk about first some of the um the topic that you're going to speak on a very high level and what people can benefit from it uh, so my my like uh, seminar or workshop it comes from some of my conversations with people right and with some of these conversations they, they would say stuff like i didn't know that i'm just like <laughs> i don't you know that i thought everyone knows the stuff so basically in my one i want to speak about how to essentially master self when i say master self it's like a lot of guys aren't in control like they think they are so how do you get in control how are you able to, I don't know, finish when you want to finish? And how do you utilize different natural ways to go about doing so? You know, the stuff that I speak about on YouTube, but I want to go into like more depth or of the actual steps because I believe like, <laughs> this might sound, yeah, I believe a key part of masculinity or, or being like your true self is control. So having the ability to do things when you want to do them, having the ability to say no, because that sets you up for, so for, for example, there's a quote like, if you change what controls you, you can change what <clears throat> you change what you can control, because different people are controlled by different things, and if you understand that, you can be controlled. So if you're not controlled by nothing, but you control yourself, for one, you can't be controlled, but also you have a different vantage point to see things. Even if you think about in the act of like being with your partner. If you're more in control of self, now you're not focused on self anymore, you're focused on her, which is a slightly different vantage point to the majority of people who don't even notice the signs that things are not well or right within their relationship. So uh, that's what I'll be speaking about. It's like natural things through history that allow guys to be more in control. So talking about herbs, talking about exercises, talking about different concepts that are somewhat foreign to the average person. And for me, I think, I'm surprised people don't know that these things are possible. So I made a video on YouTube recently where that video just took off, where I just kind of listed out some of the things I was speaking about, where I'm just like, look, did you know that you can do this? <laughs> and that, that was what the video was, is one, two, three, four. Whereas well, in the conference, I was speaking about how to go about doing that. That's it. That's my personal, um, I want to add a lot of value to, to people as well. So it'll be good. I heard that. Yeah, I, I like also, especially what you're speaking about, about the control element, especially in relation to like relationships.
relationship sex in particular your desires or like ejaculate you control that's something that in ancient culture i think that's what they like you said that was part of masculinity to develop that self-control that sexual discipline whereas i don't know for whatever reason nowadays for a lot of men they don't see that as a as a strength whereas previously that was was a strength and that's why i think it's good like you doing not only the conference but talking and emphasizing that as in that's a part of masculinity because i don't think that's really spoken about as much anymore it's kind of like men lacking self-control is kind of celebrated which is kind of wild or finishing early kind of thing because it's like they're not caring about the woman's um, satisfaction so it's good that you're talking about from a masculinity perspective as well in terms of this is this is a trait that we should try and develop so you know, that, yeah, and again, obviously, if people want to know more, head over to the Men Up In Their Game website or the Instagram to find more and obviously to purchase tickets where Paul and I will be speaking amongst, um, as well as other speakers from around the world, such as Cam Fraser and others. So again, so you've got trained people, people, experts, people have got years of experience speaking about a range of matters from erectile dysfunction, um, how to last longer in the bedroom, how to deal with premature ejaculation, um issues with with women but it'd be mainly around sex and intimacy and, and we'll be quite some of the workshops will be quite explicit and we'll be speaking very candidly about a number of matters that we can't really talk about on some of these platforms and again it will be a safe space and um in addition to the to the uh, conference which is going to be taking place on the 29th of june there's also going to be a special bundle pack and Paul, if you don't mind can you talk a little bit about what that entails for people for participants or, or attendees so a lot of people taking part in the workshop, participants, each have like different sorts of resources from ebooks to courses to seminars, right? And so the, the, what we are doing is putting all our resources together into a special bundle, right? And charging a fraction of what the compound value is. So everybody's value is like 100, 100, 100. That's basically a thousand pound. And then essentially providing that to the community at a huge fraction of the cost. So at least that way, everybody has access to insane value and insane knowledge that essentially might change change their life. So yeah, that's what the, the bundle will be about. I think, I think I'm excited about the bundle in the sense that like, I, I would have wished something like that existed, you know, years ago. As someone who's very inquisitive, I, I've had to search a lot of places to acquire some information that this will save people a lot of time. Yeah, but yeah. Most definitely. And I've also prepared part of the bundle, um, an ebook, which is going to be exclusive for Men Up in Their Game conference um, on the 14 types of female orgasms that um, men should know. And there's some illustrations there as well to help guide men. So definitely, obviously, that'll be part of the bundle. So you could obviously um, check that out. Um, and just for, again, for benefit of those who are listening, mm-hmm. If, for example, someone was not able to attend on the 29th, can people like purchase tickets and then listen after? Or is it, or is it just going to be those on the day can are able to watch the the seminars? So every ticket holder will have access to the videos after. So things will be recorded. So like generally throughout the day, not everybody's going to attend every seminar, every workshop. So there might be some that you miss or want to come back to, or there might be some you want to essentially go back to after the fact. So everything will be recorded and behind a login type of thing. So anybody who essentially grabs a ticket will have access to that. One thing I'd encourage is that if you feel like you might not make the day, but you want access to the material, uh, get a ticket now because after um, it might not be as easily accessible. That's it. Okay. And I'm also thinking about those people who have uh, obviously, uh, who don't really want people to know that they're attending. It, can they attend anonymously? Are, are their faces going to be shown anywhere? Or is it a case of, like, if you could just let, for, for people worried that they don't want people to know they're attending, even though it's virtual, are their identities going to be protected? Can you just explain if that's going to be the case? So, by, by default, everybody won't be known to each other. So, though you will know who else is on the call. But for VIP ticket holders, they have the option, if they want to, like, network with other VIP ticket holders or they want to, uh, be a bit more public they can so although things are recorded participants won't be recorded just the presentations so irrespective your you can be as anonymous as you want to be i think generally speaking it's a thing where it's a case where you get to learn in your house right 
uh, you get to understand. I think I think what I find interesting about this whole process of creating this this I say conference right is I think generally a lot of us just don't know what we don't know, and based on our lived experiences or the fact that I don't know our partners have have told us X Y and Z, we all think we are of a, a level that maybe we're not of the level. And I think what I find with men is that when I was younger, right, <laughs> and like the older guys in my school or the older guys in college, whoever, were saying certain things, my, my first question was how? Like, it was just, it's so natural to me. Oh, like, what? How'd you do? What? Right? And every time I said that, everyone looked at me crazy. Like, nobody asks how. Everyone just assumes that if a man says, I'm the man, he is. But what, 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 was, the, <laughs> you know, what was the method to the madness? Yeah? Cool. So that is not just like from my experience. Generally, no one tells anyone anything. Like when I was asking my boy when I was in college, I'm like, how did you get that outcome? He, that's the first time he's explained that since or before, because no one's asking how. Everyone just assumes everyone knows, right? So like with this space, what I'm finding interesting is that everyone just still assumes that they're the guy. I'm <laughs> just like. The stats doesn't add up. That's why the first video, I was like, yo, you know, most people think they're the man, but the stats, if you look at any sort of studies, and you know, because you've been through all the studies, or if you look at Twitter, you follow like a Lonely's page where people are sending in stories. I'm like, there's a mismatch here. <laughs> so I think irrespective, everybody needs the humility to understand there's always more to learn. And the fact or the point where you stop learning, is collapsed. Because when you get to like 40, 50 or 20 years into your relationship, that's when the cracks start to show you're 10 years in. <laughs> so all this information, it, it, it gives you like cards underneath your sleeve. So when you get into like a routine, you pull out another card, oh, I didn't see that one, you know? And that gives a level of excitement that you can carry on and be 80, 90 and still very much in love. Huh? Uh, for me, it's just, it's just normal, right? In the sense that information, that like continue learning. When you speak to people about Tantra or or certain practices, they're like, oh, what's that? I'm like, I have the same internet as you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, a little random, but basically the moral of the story is come to the event. Like for the price, you've really got nothing to lose. The amount of value you can basically attain or, or gather compared to what you're paying. It's just, I've just never seen something like that before. If this was in person, the, the tickets would be like 200, 300 quid, that's it. Oh, I hear that. I mean, well, a couple of things. First, if it was in person, it'd be quite hard to attract. Well, it's good because it's, it's virtual and it's online because you'll get more people, I, I, I believe, because like even, for example, when I do IG Live, right, I will get a number of guys who message me after the IG Live or just before and they will say, save it because I don't, I don't want people to know that I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Cause I, know how men, I know how a lot of men think, so it's fine. So that's why I'll try and save it and then like, upload it maybe like on YouTube or whatever. So... Yeah. Um, or even when I've done it, like when I did my Nyaza event in London, this was, wow, this is January 2020. I had a number of guys hitting me up who wanted to come, but they were like, oh, you know, I can't really come, but, yeah. you know, like, let me, you know, send me the highlights. I'm like, I'm not sending you the highlights. So I know, again, a lot of men, we have this ego, and like you said, a lot of men think that they're the man. And because even and amongst men, a lot of us, we just, we just exaggerate as well. And there's a lot of studies which kind of show this, like what men will say in terms of how often they're, partner climaxes compared to what actually the woman actually says there's a big mismatch yeah. so if you go by what a lot of men are saying then every man nine out of ten men think they're the man in the bedroom whereas if you were to ask the women it's something totally different and again you just need to have like you mentioned about the humility part and the willingness to to learn yeah. um so because again a lot of men we have that ego um that ego okay is fair enough but then it's just a case of okay they sometimes sometimes they want to learn, but then how do you go about it? So it might be in the form of like a virtual conference. Some people books, but I think a lot of guys that I come across don't really like reading. So that's why I'm glad that you know your a conference like this is great because I think that's more in the realm of how men will prefer to kind of take information. Because everyone wants to learn, but there's just different avenues of how do you get information. It's either you know like as if for a book, through like a, a webinar or seminar. It could be for your partner, but then what? And a lot of the work I do, I always try to, try to hear the woman's perspective because at the end of the day, if we're talking about satisfying a woman, 
I don't want to hear about a number of guys' experience unless they are trained or experienced speaking to other women. I want to hear what women's experiences are because they ultimately can help us. You know, they can, like, so we're like the pilots and they're like the controller. That's what one a marriage counselor she put it to me to, like, as, as, so you need to work with each other. So that's why, again, but with, with this conference, you're going to have obviously a number of men with experience and specialists in their own field, um, helping men obviously develop self control, um, last longer in the bedroom, and ultimately learning some new skills and techniques and tips how to sexually satisfy women. So that's why I'm really looking forward to it. And like Paul mentioned, it's going to be recorded. So even if you're not able, obviously, you need to purchase your ticket beforehand. But even if you're not able to attend live, or you don't need to watch all of the seminars because there's going to be a number of speakers, you can go back and watch them. And then obviously we've got the bundle, which um, different people going to be given, whether it's some courses, some ebooks, um, or discounted prices. Again, definitely highly recommend people check it out because it's um, it's one of a kind. It's the Men Up In Their Game conference. And just the reality is that a lot of people, I know, again, some people might think it's quite a taboo topic, but a lot of men go through different issues in the, in the bedroom, whether it's, like there was one study that said 52% of men, certainly worldwide, will experience some form of erectile dysfunction. So it's not, it's not like, an, and this is not like a new phenomenon. I know a lot of people blame porn, but this has been happening in the ancients. There's been, for different reasons, whether it's bad diet, um, eating unhealthy foods or what have you, or circulatory problems in terms of with, 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 with their blood. But there's a lot of issues that men have in the bedroom, not only in terms of erectile problems, but even in terms of with being able to um, communicate effectively with their partner and not understanding that women's response, sexual response cycle is not the same as ours as men. So it's just understanding how women, how women are compared to how we are as men, and then obviously trying to help ultimately us develop that set, that self-control, the sexual discipline, and ultimately become better in the bedroom to, in, order, in order to sexually satisfy um, our, our female partner. So again, really looking forward to, to the event. Is there anything, before we head off, is there anything that, like when you were doing your research and putting this conference together that surprised you what one thing i know there must be a number but what thing that really surprised you from like doing your research if you don't mind sharing uh, what in terms of statistics <laughs> or just anything statistics or, some, or a technique or something that that's going to be featured anything that uh, like you didn't really know that well that's quite interesting that you want to now obviously help people learn about um or is it the ignorance that a lot of men have like you mentioned earlier yeah, like, you know, you know, there's two parts to the story, right? right? There's people who think they're good, in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, but don't understand how bad things can be, which I think if you're in a committed relationship, you're married, you should always be trying to understand how bad things can be, right? Um, and there's people who have issues. So because of, I've been talking about stuff like this at different points for maybe like the last eight years. So I've had every sort of DM that you could imagine, right? I met a guy, for example, who DM me, he hasn't had an erection in four years. As in, I say, right, no morning wood, nothing, right? And I was able to, I will say work with him, but virtually kind of coach him on things to do because they gave up on him, right? He's done, he's done all the tests and stuff like that, they can't find out what's up, right? Now he's back to, not perfection, but last time we spoke, He's experiencing something again, that like he's in a committed relationship again, that like, because mo mostly people big give up on you on that. But uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who they're married, let's say like two kids, right? At this point, the spark is not what it used to be, right? Whether now guys are like begging, oh, please, <laughs> can you, you know? So I guess the point I'm trying to say is a spectrum and there's, there's something to gain for each part of that spectrum. And it's the knowledge piece. So some of the people who are speaking, their, their ethos is more so about what, what you can do within self, right? How do you love yourself better or understand yourself better to be a better servant or to serve better? Because like a part of being who we are is like to help serve, not just in this in instant. So that might not be in the game, but yes, there's a key part of it, which is the intimacy side but there's a huge mental component that I want us to dive in. The mental side, it's like, you know, when I was younger, in a city, London, 
when people have these conversations, the key words that they use is like, I just, you know, it's not about the, it's not about, I guess, the servitude. It's about what they gained. So there's a mentality element to that. And sometimes people are trying to get stuff because internally things are missing. You might not be successful in life. So you're not, you're not as successful as you want to be. So what do you do? You try to be successful with, with, you know, the opposite sex in a sense. Mm. If that makes sense. You're now being a bit more promiscuous where that energy should be charged and focused. So I guess the point I'm trying to say is like the, the mental side of this thing is something that will be less excited to touch on for some people coming to learn, but it's an important side of it because there's a mindset of, I say, men up in the game as, as, a, as a person who's gone through this process that leads you to continuous discovery, continuous development, and continuous improvement because there's always more that can be done. Or especially as we, as, we, as we age, right? We also go through, through different transformations. The person I was two years ago is slightly different to how I am now. So how do you even keep up that research loop of self? So the mental side and the physical side, yeah, we're about to marry those. And, and uh, some of the speakers, like, I, I've got a huge notepad. I'm, I'm ready. And <laughs> I, I know enough to know that I don't know anything. I don't know enough. Like, I'm just a a little boy in this game in the sense of like how much there is in the world, especially the comment we had the other day diving into like African methodologies and African teachings, which aren't written. There's a world that you have to travel to, to learn of, because <laughs> it just hasn't been studied because this is not exciting in a sense, it's somewhat taboo. But I like to think I'm a bit of a predictor of industries. Like everything happening within a space now, the amount of people they are speaking about certain subjects, like I saw this coming. I was speaking to my friend about it, like 2021. Look, in a couple of years, this is going to happen. When the plant-based thing started, right? Like, I've been plant-based since, what, 2011, 2012. I was saying, it's soon, this is going to be a big industry. When Herbs, when, I, when we launched Herbie Box and stuff, I was like, soon, it's going to be a big, like, Herbs is everywhere. And now I'm saying, look, where this is going, I can see where it's going. We need to create something to own it before the big, the big, <laughs> mm. I speak in parables, but we have to create something that compete with the big boys because the big boys are gonna start, you see it, because I know you get a lot of DMs from these pills that really don't treat the root causes, but they're marketed to people for these things. But the truth of the matter is, is there's something going on outside that's leading to the worsening of things for a lot of people. Let's create something that's gonna that's gonna be a good guys right to make a change and make a change yeah a lot of like, parables in there, but yeah that's just stuff that goes more no, I love, love that well said and i liked what you said about which is i think it's good to bring that home about the men it's not just about yes it's about intimacy relationships sex but also for men themselves and like to value themselves and mental aspect because yeah i think and this is what i've noticed as well and that's why i'm glad that you know having this like men's only space is because oftentimes even like some of the dms that i receive or sometimes when i just share some things that i've come across like on reddit just to hear people's thoughts if a woman has an issue people are more empathetic and compassionate to a woman's problem if a man has a sexual problem he can be ridiculed um by both men and women but oftentimes by, by women and again if he doesn't know something he doesn't know something so if he's got ignorance that, that's fine um, but he's, if he's got a willing to learn, and that's why he's asking for help, then by all means, people should kind of try and see him where see him where he's at and try and kind of help help that person. But there aren't many spaces where I think men can really open up about a number of. Like I remember there was one person that I'm, um, that came to me that I know of, and he was talking. It was about four of us. He came to me on the side because he knows the work that I do, and he was just saying that one of our friends was talking about how he had sex for like three hours, he's swinging on chandeliers with his girl, this, that, and the other. And I just told him, you know that what the person said is BS. But he didn't realise, he thought, because he was comparing his sexual exploits to that to that particular person. So he had unrealistic expectations. And that's also one of the things, because a, a lot of men, when we get together, what we, you might overhear, it is exaggerated. So, But again, that might be entertainment or whatever. And even if someone is lasting for a couple of hours or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're having the best experience or the woman's having the best experience. 
And that's what people need to realize. So that's why it's important that people have different models or guides to know that there isn't just one way to kind of please a woman or there isn't one way for you to feel you've fulfilled yourself as a man. But if you've got different models and prototypes, then you can see what works for you. But I think unfortunately nowadays we're kind of just seeing maybe one or two kind of really exaggerated types of what a man or what masculinity is or how you should be in a bedroom. And then people are comparing themselves to that. And then obviously they feel like they're less than or they're not up to the standard. So that, that's why I think, it, that's why I'm glad that we've got different people from different parts of, you know, the world and their own experiences. So people can share and learn from different, because there's certain things in terms of this different types of masculinity that I respect that someone else might not, you know. So that's why it's good that we've got, you've got different, like I said, speakers and things. And they, and they will have their own value and ethical system that might resonate with one person more than more than another person. So I think that's very good, especially in this day and age where a lot of men, I think, are under some, a lot of strains to kind of be this ideal man. But the ideal man that's presented to them, maybe they don't, it doesn't fit within their ethical value system. So, but yeah, definitely looking forward to, um, to, to the event. And um, it's actually next week. I said in a couple of weeks, it's actually next week. Before we wrap up, is there anything else which... Um, you want to talk about or promote any up any everything else you've got going on um for people for people to be aware of and obviously please let people know give them your handles and stuff like this all your handles because again i'm going to upload this on my youtube and and uh facebook so if you don't mind promoting yourself yeah. and anything else you've got yeah, going yeah, on yeah, the yeah, so, um i'm doing the book everywhere so as a my personal thing i think on instagram i still use doing a book just just to live and I've got like different pages for you. So the conference is Men Up Game. Like this is the start of something huge. Like everything I say gets done. So if I'm saying it's the start of something big, like getting at the ground floor, joining, supporting us, let's let's make history in a sense. And then uh if you're watching this after the conference is gone, there's still gonna be a lot of value in going to the website. It's literally menupgame.com uh on my youtube i do a lot of videos got books on amazon i think it might even be useful just to go for some of these comments there might be some questions there i don't know who i see but i didn't really know sorry there's comments sorry i wasn't yeah i can't see the comments because yeah. i don't know how things stepped up but let's see right. um, oh no <laughs> before someone's on there these guys are talking about penises <laughs> i'm on set. So uh, someone asks, I should have asked this question. I thought oh, we, I've kind of answered. What can women attending benefit from this? <laughs> I think that, look, I'm not, it's pro guys. Everyone's anonymous. If you want to grab a ticket. And you see, if this is just me, right? I'm a bit of a weirdo. If this was on the other foot and it was women only sort of thing, I'm such a curious person, right? If my friends would tell me, I go to their house, I'm opening cupboards. I need, like, information is information, right? And I like opposite ways of thinking, right? So, essentially, I'd, I'd probably just grab a ticket, but it's a men-only event, but everyone's anonymous. And if you are missed, I'll maybe even buy a thing. So, put it this way, yes, it's for men, but there's likely, maybe, potentially, how, depending on how this one goes, there might be a, a woman up in the game coming, which will be co-ran or co-worked with some other people in the space but let's let's so do you have some more minutes actually there's a couple other questions i wanted to ask you i didn't realize if you've yeah, got some time. okay I'm cool there. yeah so um before my question there's a someone else asks how can i get tickets if, if anyone's got more questions feel free to ask in the comment box sorry i wasn't really but now i'm going to pay attention to it so yeah. asks, how can i get tickets uh, a little bit of context so like habib his Instagram live wasn't working to add me, so we've done it the other way around. So this is Habib's live, hence why he's hosted. I hope people might be somewhat confused. But the tickets is menupgame.com. And what I'm gonna do is, if you use the discount code early, as in E-A-R-L-Y, you get yourself a discount too. I think that should expire tomorrow, I think. But yeah, get yourself a ticket. It's gonna be, be game-changing. I like that word a lot. Yeah. Actually, a, game. a question, and this is something I think we spoke about um, offline like last week, but just for the benefit of people who are listening. So I often get um, women 
sex educators, sex therapists who want to get men involved in their um in their like conferences or their workshops, their events. And I I think you what you've created in terms of like especially at like the marketing and even the name of it is very effective that attracts men just for the benefit of women especially those women who are like trying to attract men whether it's in their workshops seminars conferences or what have you how do you is there a difference to market towards to men compared to women and if there is difference what are those differences that they can kind of learn and benefit from i think from a marketing standpoint if i was a woman trying to market towards men i'm appealing to a part that men can't give in a sense and uh, as a man like we are we are, are like it's like a social hierarchy right we want to be we want to compete like for example i sometimes think about why i'm somewhat suited to help facilitate these conversations and the reason i believe that i have confidence in speaking about this is in reality, outside of social media, I am someone a lot of people respect. Does that make sense? So you have to be respectable to facilitate certain conversations. Whereas respect is, is sometimes an element of fear, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Karen has put, he said recorded, but element, it's an element of fear. So like, I might have these conversations now but generally in real life i won't take certain jokes either whereas that respect allows or facilitates certain conversations whereas as a woman you have to appeal to i guess a different part of what makes men tick or what makes them tick so i would approach if i was a woman trying to market this event i would approach it very differently i would approach it from a connection standpoint that's the stuff that i have more authority on I think for guys to truly listen, and men don't listen to men. So if men don't listen to men, it's difficult from a woman's standpoint. So I'd understand that. I think what makes this special is that each person is respectable, right? I am who I am, it's irrespective of all of this stuff. And that gives me the confidence. This is internal, by the way. It gives me the confidence to speak about whatever I want, because I know if all this went away, I'm still me. Does that make sense? And yeah. that in itself is somewhat, is somewhat the person who needs to have these combos. Yeah. No, I have <laughs> Just add to what you said, yeah. I think, and you kind of said it, yeah, men don't listen to men, but I would say men only listen to men that they respect. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's, and that's one of the challenges. And unfortunately, a lot of men don't listen to women. I'm, that's just, I'm not saying that's good but that's important that, 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 I, like what, I like what you said and i think it's important for um especially for women to understand it's like and another thing that you've done which i'll give you credit for is even the choice of words um like men up in their game it's all about improvement to be better so a lot of times um this is what i've when i've spoken to um to women um who are like sex educators therapists and what have you is that oftentimes when a woman maybe is asking about an issue in relation to sex and intimacy it's where they feel they may have a problem or they might feel they're abnormal and it's like how do i fix this whereas with men because we've got this some overinflated ego even if we have got a problem it's kind of disguised as how can i be the best how can i be better so it's always kind of like more performance or goal orientated driven um as in this is where you are how can you get to further than where you are how can you be the best how can you... whereas if you kind of present it because one, one one funny interaction i had with um someone a, f a few years ago when she was saying she was talking about penis sizes and she was trying to reassure men and she said oh you know the, the average penis is only five and a half inches and i was saying that that still won't really connect with a number of men because they still want to be 10 12 inches even if they're not it's still this idea that you want to be the best have sex like like a porn star or be better than a porn star so we've got this very inflated ego so in order to attract them like even cam frazier he's got this um i like the name of one of his courses it was like f fuck like a porn star or have sex like a porn star and he was getting some pushback from some women because they were like are you encouraging porn he's like no he's not encouraging porn but he's speaking to men's mentality because a lot of men look at porn stars as being the ideal or the best at sex so you need to speak to them 
according to the level to attract them and then you can debunk like some of the myths around like porn like i saw a documentary recently and they were talking about how this former male porn star was talking about how 90 percent of the male porn stars they use injections and so it, obviously if you know that's the case and a lot of the scenes are not real they're not authentic then you shouldn't be replicating that it's just like but if you're benchmarking porn as like that's that's a good step so that's how that's what you're trying to replicate into not only in terms of positions but how long you last in the bedroom is just unrealistic it's just like watching a james bond movie or fast and the furious and you're trying to replicate that when you're learning to drive so it's just breaking these things down that if you know they're like common sense or common knowledge but for a lot of men they're not these are the the model that people are trying to replicate in their bedroom so it's just trying to debunk some of those things and also just giving them you know the practical knowledge and and um but what you've done even like uh, two videos where you're breaking down statistics or you're just showing that men think they're great in the bedroom but women are saying otherwise you're saying it in a way that's indirectly saying okay we've got an issue here rather than saying men you've got a problem you need to be better in the bedroom you know what i mean so those little, little things that i've even shared your video with a couple of um women who are asking me like i said um for a number of years until how do they attract the men i'm saying this is an example because it has to be like kind of like performance driven rather than um maybe what generally might appeal to a woman might be even like the choice of words things like healing intimacy love um that's nice but it doesn't really attract the average man you know so it's just kind of so it's just for it's just for people to learn from because that's something that i'm noticing a number of or that video that i put up with um it's a couple of years old but the video with kevin samuels and i forgot the lady's name the sexologist when she was saying you know like all of her the women that all of the people that attend her classes are women and she's struggling to find men to attend and it's like again it's the marketing exactly but yeah, the and the speakers, so yeah that, i think um sorry go. sorry no sorry go on i say like there's there's something deeper with all of this right where this is the first step I think, generally speaking, I don't know if you, you know, you probably read like Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and then when he speaks about that transmutation, right? There's something deeper where I've I've made like a video maybe like eight years ago on this, and I speak about like charisma and where that comes from, confidence where it comes from, right? How to like boost your confidence and charisma. So everything with this confidence is not always going to be about expression. It's about understanding to understand self, to boost self, where you're in certain rooms and you're better at attracting the business partner that you want, you're better at attracting investment, because it's all attraction. There's a, le- there's a deeper level that I'll, I, it's like, what do you call it? Sweets and medicine, I can't remember the quote. You're tra- I'm, there's a, a way of thinking that I want all of this to take us to, where the foundation is understanding all of this so that thinking helps us acquire wealth because really and truly like a lot of our motivations well, why we respect men the men we respect to really they they are they are attractive to the outcomes that they want so if they want money or whatever it is they they are but the energy that that is the foundation for who they are or magnetism <laughs> it correlates to this stuff and as a guy you need to master this stuff because when you're with your partner that outcome, when you walk out the door, you're ready to tackle anything. Whereas I tell you now, like I can spot people to some extent, it's gonna sound weird, with issues, because there's a look in there, right? Like th- there's, there's a piece of the puzzle that's missing. And obviously as who I am, I, people tell me a lot of their problems and stuff. Like people understand they have a problem, some people, and a lot of people don't. They think they're, they're five minutes, they're 10 minutes, they're 20 minutes. That's normal. I'm not saying it's not or it is, but they don't. They're not aware of like how far things can go. And that's why I think all of this is important because it says what's possible. It gives you a step-by-step plan to get there. But the ultimate goal for all of this is not just about expression. It's about a new self that's somewhat enlightened because you understand a channel that gives you an extra... Uh, it's a lot of uh, parables, but this is why you need to come to the conference because we're going to talk on them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and also, like you said, I think, yeah, um, 
Is there also going to be, because I like what you spoke about, like the charisma and the confidence part. Uh, is there also going to be any speakers or, that, or that's going to touch on uh, developing like confidence in terms of how to talk to women, whether it's a potential partner or the current partner? The reason why I'm saying that is because I've noticed that a lot of men, and these are, I mean, I'm 40, I'm top guys that's my age, older and even a bit younger, who find it very difficult to can speak to women whether it's their current partner, wife, girlfriend, what have you, or even like female friends. Like, I don't know if it's because of a lack of experiences, but a number of things that some guys have come to me and complained about, and even women, is that a lot of men find it very difficult to, to, speak, to, to speak to women outside of like whether they've got children or what have you. So I'm just wondering how to encourage men to develop like, you know, you should be able to speak about things outside of, I don't know, like sports and on a video games or like their, their children. Do you understand what I mean? Like, but if you've got, if you're like a well-read person, you've got different interests and things like that. You have a maturity that you can converse with women of, of different stages. You don't have the mind of a, a 80, 19 year old where I find a lot of guys, unfortunately have a somewhat of a stunted growth in terms of emotion, intellectually, where they can't converse with women because past the age of 20, 23, they don't really read much. They don't really Go to they have got different experiences. They find it difficult to converse with women, whether, like I said, it, whether in a relationship or for a potential relationship. So, is that something that anyone is going to cover? I mean, that just came to my mind yeah, because yeah. I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's somebody who will speak on that. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that would that would be good. I think generally, it's the stakes are higher for rejection which leads to not a lot of people making attempts. So you can approach somebody wrong and upon, I don't know, shade bar or something. So I think the, the, the need to have that confidence is important because that confidence is very transferable to every area, every area of life. It's the same person who probably has an issue sparking and maintaining a conversation who also might have an issue when it comes time in the boardroom and they're like, who has an idea for X? They might not, they might be second guessing themselves. There's, when I say men up in the game, this is like the first frontier. There'll be a lot of parts to this for us up in our game in general. And I, I try to have some, I say like medicine in with the sugar that will allow for some of these conversations as well. No, that's good. I like to de develop those, those transferable skills. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and again, and just a couple of other things I think just for people to be aware of obviously they'll get more insight and obviously at the actual conference mm -hmm. and it will be recorded for those of you who are joining a bit, a bit late um it will be recorded there'll be a bundle as well for for VIP where there'll be some additional information in addition to the seminars and workshops um where be, people will be talking about a range of matters from um self-control um to develop um sexual discipline dealing with um, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, how to last longer in the bedroom, how to satisfy a woman in the bedroom, kunyaza and the trad tradition of squirting. Um, yeah, there's going to be so many different speakers from around the world talking about a number of um, matters that I think a lot of men need to kind of be aware of. Um, a couple of other things before we head off. What about matters to do with sexual miseducation, primarily porn and um escort services and the reason why i say that this is something that i didn't really realize un until maybe i would say maybe like four or five years ago i didn't realize how many men um solicit um escorts and i'm talking about men who are in their 20s 30s men who outwardly appear very confident attractive but because it's like seen as the easy option, um, so I found I've come across a number of men who like whether they're addicted or that's what they. So when they're used to obviously sleeping with like escorts or like sex workers, then it's very difficult to then have a relationship because what you're used to getting like from obviously an escort is going to be very different in terms of how to navigate an actual real relationship, and that's also where I've come across a number of men. They're learning about how to please a woman has been via either porn of by some escorts that they're sleeping with and the reality is the escort is only going to say or do things that's going to please you doesn't mean she's actually satisfied so i'm just wondering that well, obviously we're going to kind of deal with that but i don't know if you've come across that as being 
an issue, but that's something that I've seen in the last, like, like I said, four to five years. I was very surprised because I thought that was just for people of a certain age, certain demographic, and it's a lot of young, even black men from London, inner city London, that that are soliciting. Um, again, each their own if that's what you want to do, but then they find it difficult to like actually form a, like a, an effective and a long term relationship. I don't know if, the, if that's something that you've kind of come across with not maybe necessarily your, your, your immediate friends, but your pair groups, is that something that you've noticed? Yeah, kind of, but not really. So like, I'm a bit of a, like a, I say like a popular loner. So some, I've got stories, but because everyone knows probably who my friends are, or the, or the, the, the <laughs> I just keep them. <laughs> but one thing I can say is generally like when, as a man, you're coming up in the game trying to learn. There's nowhere to learn, right? Most men just learn from those avenues, I, I think, because where else? Like, if I think about me when I was younger, right, my curiosity led me to LimeWire. So, like, I still have videos on my computer that I probably downloaded in, like, 08, 07, 06, right? that were essentially from, you know, like there were people in those generations selling courses, right? They were basically like hacked courses that I was trying to put on LimeWire. LimeWire for you kids is basically, or oh, it's like torrents now maybe, but you can basically download it. So my curiosity led me to getting like the Kama Sutra in school. <laughs> but my curiosity is not just this, it's every part of my life I like to learn. So it wasn't like, that knowledge was applied. I was like, oh, what's this? this is interesting. I'm curious about this. Um, so the point is, that's an anomaly. The average person is going on these websites and, oh yeah, you do this. And that's where the whole concept of the jackhammer or the jackrabbit came in, because that was popular in, even like when we think about a lot of people's kinks and, and fantasies, what came first, the kink or seeing the kink on some website and then why to replicate it. It's like, so, the point I'm saying is that's the avenue a lot of people learn from, which isn't isn't the best. And there's a lot of relearning people will have to do to understand that reality doesn't match that. And that's why sometimes you got to come away from that stuff because the level of it, the level of excitement that gives you, you just reality can't match. And there's even porn induced erectile dysfunction that a lot of guys get, um, and people are having these issues younger. It used to be where people get to that 35 and they have issues. I know people way, way younger that are having, yeah, it's not what it should be at that age. <laughs> so you have to somewhat unlearn. And for me, I don't judge people. I know people that have got down certain routes and most of these guys know how to maneuver. So this is just something else because there's a spectrum. It's not everybody who goes to solicit that is lacking. Um, my assumption is that it could be a case that is, I don't know, I, I don't fully understand it, but people who've gone down this avenue, I've always quizzed them. I'm like, why does, what is it like? Cause that's how I am. If anyone knows me, I ask a lot of questions. And how I understand it is people just want no stress and maybe the transactional element um, reduces that stress, but I think a key part of intimacy is the bond and that must be missing. My curiosity says that's missing with that. I don't know. Um, these are what, just you said, no, what you said is actually important. And again, just for making it clear, I'm glad you said that. We're not, I'm not saying it or I don't, I don't want to come across like I'm shaming or judging. Each, each to their own, right? I, I was just more, and this was maybe a learning experience for me to try and understand because I don't know, maybe because I was always brought up to be like there's more pleasure in the conquest and it might be from an egotistical perspective. I couldn't understand why someone preferred the transactional element when it's not like real. Mm -hmm. But again, some people have their different reasons that like some men are more than capable of, you know, attracting the opposite sex, but they just want something quick and easy. But that's not something I've never really understood. So that's why I've really actually been reading um, a really good book, biography by, um, what's the Arsenal player? I can't forget his name. Nicholas Bentner. I don't know if you follow football, but he's a former Premier League player that used to play for Arsenal when he played for Juventus. And he was speaking very candidly. And he just said, like, he's someone who is 
know he's an attractive guy. He's used to dating a number of women and he spoke about some of his, you know, exploits. But he was saying that and like in the Premier League, it's very common for footballers to solicit um, prostitutes and escorts. And he was like, the reason why is because then it's less likely that they're going to be exposed. Right? And he said they'll prefer sex workers over civilians, he called them, like normal women or not. And he just said because a sex worker or prostitute is unlikely to do like a kiss and tell story. So I understood the rationale behind it. Not necessarily that I agree with it, but I just wanted to, it, it's, it's like a, a different insight. And again, for for those men who are obviously engaged in soliciting um, escorts or, or watching um, porn, the issue or one of the main issues I have with that is that because if you've indulged in that for a number of years, you might think that is how to like satisfy a woman, not realizing that the, the um, sex worker is play, she's performing for you. Likewise, the porn you're watching, the woman is performing for you. So it's not an accurate depiction of female sexual satisfaction or female pleasure or if you want to have intimacy. And that, that's that's one of the challenges I'm finding that men who have like engaged in those activities for a certain period of time, for them, because they're experiencing sex, they think they are the man in the bedroom, not realizing that the woman that they are or the women that they're sleeping with, they're playing for the camera or playing for the, playing up to them to to massage their own ego. So that's why again you would need that, like you mentioned, the relearning or the unlearning that those men would need to do to then understand. Oh, actually, this is actually how to satisfy a woman because and every woman's different some women have different challenges whether it's anorgasmia um arousal non concordance and all these things that one needs to learn that you won't find generally from porn or with an escort because again they're playing for camera or playing up to the guy so but anyway we've spoken more than enough again tickets are available the 29th of june yes. men up in their game a course, I mean, sorry, a conference, seminar, workshop, however you want to call it, men only, talking about a number of matters, um, touched on a little, but we're really going to really delve in. There's going to be a number of speakers. Paul's going to be one of those speakers. I'm going to be one of those speakers, as well as Cam Fraser, a couple of Derek, and I think there's some other people that, again, check out the website, check out the IG page. Thank you for your time, Paul. Is there anything else, any last comments before we wrap up? Let's, let's get it, man. Let's make history. Most men think they're amazing in the bedroom, but statistics from women say different. Besides, when you want to up your game, when you want to do better, where do you go? I'm hosting the number one conference in the world, giving men invaluable tips to up their game. This is a virtual conference. You can learn from international speakers in the comfort of your home. Learn how to fix down there. Learn how to last for longer. Learn how to attract a mate, how to build your confidence and dominance. This is the place for you. Join 3,000 men from all around the world coming together with one aim. Men, let's up our game. Reserve your sport today.